Hello everyone. Welcome to the second module of transportation in plants. In the last module, we learned about the vascular bundles. Today, in this module, we will be learning about how food is transported in the plant and how water is absorbed by the roots. Let us first understand how is food transported in the plants. Food is produced by the process of photosynthesis. Now it is produced as glucose and it is stored in the plant body as starch. Now what happens is that the phloem conducts the food in the upward and the downward direction. This is called as the translocation of food. Now let us learn about how water is absorbed by the roots. Now, water is the raw material for photosynthesis as we have seen above, before also. Now, this water has to be absorbed by the roots and it is done by roots. But how it is done? Let us see that. Now, the root is the main structure and it divides into lateral roots and it redivides into root hair. Now, this root hair is something that absorbs water from the soil. The property of capillarity says that the attraction of water molecules to narrow surface and surface tension. Since the water is absorbed by the root hair, we also have to understand the structure of the root hair. So now let us understand and learn the structure of the root hair. The structure of a root hair cell is so that it is an extension to the epidermal cell as we can see it on the screen. The root hair has an outer cell membrane which is sorry the cell wall and the inner cell membrane. The outer cell wall is fully permeable membrane that is it can send all the substances in whereas the inner cell membrane is semi permeable so it will send only some substances in now you must be thinking why only a root hair let us see that now a root hair cell has a completely permeable cell wall so it will send all the substances in and the inner cell membrane is semi permeable so it sends only water or certain substances in now the second point is that the large number of root hair gives a large number of area large number of area larger greater the absorption now the third point is that in this in the root cell root hair cell there is a higher concentration of solute minerals. Solute and minerals are high in the root cell. But the matter is less hence, uh, compared to the other surrounding. Henceforth, root hair is good for absorption of water. Now let us see the types of absorption of water. The first process of absorption of water is diffusion. Okay, so this is the definition and I have already told you that do not be afraid of definitions. Say the definitions again and again. It will be fixed in our mind. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from the region of its higher concentration to the region of its lower concentration when the two are in direct contact free of energy. Let us understand this definition now. Diffusion is the movement of molecules. I hope there is no doubt in this line. From the region of its higher concentration to the region of its lower concentration. So where it is more and where it is less. Say that your certain molecules are more and your certain molecules are less. Then from higher concentration to the lower concentration the molecules will go. Means it will go from the higher concentration where it is more 
to the lower concentration where it is less when the two are in direct contact when the in fact the two are in direct contact this high concentration this two or lower concentration and are, then there is no energy required let us take an example as you can see in screen when you sprinkle salt on watermelon or in cabbage what happens is that it will start leaving water why is it so diffusion takes place when you sprinkle salt on it the salt is in direct contact with the watermelon or with the cabbage now in the salt water is less but in the watermelon or in the cabbage there is high concentration of water so water gets transported from the region of its higher concentration to the region of its lower concentration means water gets transported from the watermelon or the cabbage to the salt and hence for water is released out as you can see on the screen now let us move to osmosis osmosis is the movement of water molecules from the region of its higher concentration to the region of its lower concentration through a semi permeable membrane this definition is similar to diffusion but there are certain things which are very important but different let us understand osmosis is the movement of water molecules diffusion was movement of molecules but in osmosis definition water molecules is important osmosis is the movement of water molecules from the region of its higher concentration to the region of its lower concentration i hope there is no doubt in this because i have explained this up before also from where it is more it goes to from where it is less from higher concentration to the region of its lower concentration through a semi permeable membrane means when there is water molecules and semi permeable membrane then it is osmosis but when it is only molecules and direct contact then it is diffusion now there are two types of osmosis endosmosis and exosmosis now in endosmosis it is an inward movement of water that is water will or the higher concentration of water is not in the cell but it is outside the cell and there is an inward movement that is the water will come uh, uh, in the cell from out whereas in exosmosis it is an outward movement for the in the cell has higher concentration of water and from the cell the water moves in the outer cell another difference is since the water is coming in the cell the cell swells up in endosmosis whereas the water is going out of the cell so in exosmosis the cell shrinks now let us know about the next process which is active transport active transport is the movement of solute ions from an already lower concentration to a higher concentration utilizing energy let us understand this active transport is the movement of solute ions now in act in diffusion it is only molecules in osmosis it is only water molecules and in active transport it is solute ions now uh, active transport is a movement of solute ions from an already lower concentration to a higher concentration now in diffusion in an osmosis it was from the region of its higher concentration to lower concentration but in active transport it is from the lower concentration to higher concentration that means where it is less from there it is going to where it is more now 
this happens, utilizing energy. That means active transport utilizes energy. Diffusion and osmosis do not require energy. I hope you must have understood active transport. Let us move ahead now. Now let us learn about root pressure. Root pressure is a pressure developed due to the continuous inward movement of water molecules due to cell osmosis, due to alternate turgid and flaccid state which uh, helps in ascent of sap. Let us understand this. Root pressure is a pressure developed due to continuous inward movement of water. Since there is inward movement of water in the cell, again and again, again and again, continuously, there is a pressure developed. Root pressure is a pressure developed due to continuous inward movement of water due to cell to cell osmosis. Now, how is this inward movement of water taking place? There is a cell to cell osmosis taking place. There is an inward movement of water. So, this is endosmosis taking place over here. From cell to another cell, from one cell to another cell, as if okay, it's happening from cell to cell, endosmosis. So, there is an inward movement of water continuously due to ter alternate turgid and flaccid state, which gives to ascent of sap. What is ascent of sap? Let us learn. Ascent of sap. Ascent of sap is the upward movement of water and minerals in the plant body. Very short definition and very simple to understand. Ascent of sun is the movement of water. I hope there is no doubt. Upward movement. So here water is going upward in the plant body. Okay. Of water and minerals in the plant body. So this is done. Let's now understand transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor. Let's now understand transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor by the aerial parts of the plant. Now there is a loss of water taking place in the plant. How is it done? It is done in the form of water vapor. And this water vapor is gone out from the aerial parts of the plant. That is the stem and the, and the leaves. Roots can't do transpiration. Now let us have an experiment to understand transpiration. You can take a plant and cover it with a bell jar or a, a polythene or something like that. And then give it water you can observe that there will be some moisture appearing on the bell jar or the polythene why is it so transpiration takes place in the form of water vapor there is water vapor coming out and that is not escaping since we have kept the bell jar or a polythene on it so it is getting trapped over there and that is a moisture we can see but the precautions to be done are that you should regularly water the plant and the polythene or the bell jar must be airtight there should be no air in it. now let us go to the next part what is transpiration in full now let us understand about transpirational pull. Transpirational pull is a force exerted on the xylem vessel which helps it to take in the water in the upward direction. Let us understand. Transpirational pull is a force exerted on the xylem vessel. Now this force is something which is exerted on xylem. Which makes the xylem pull the water in the upward direction. We all know xylem's function is to conduct water from roots to all parts of the plant. So roots are down and other parts are up. So from down to up it has to 
take it. So this is has to be done by a force and this force is the transpirational force. Now let us understand about the difference between cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is the tendency of like molecules to get joined. Like molecules, like water molecule will join with water molecule only. I hope you must have understood. And this adhesion is a tendency of different solutes together at the surface means in cohesion there are different solutes they are not joining but they are together at the surface now the example for cohesion is water molecules and example for addition is water on the xylem vessel let us see the factors affecting transpiration. The first factor is sunlight. More the sunlight, more transpiration. Because due to the sunlight, the stomata opens. And due to that, water escapes from the stomata in the form of water vapor. The second factor affecting transpiration is temperature. More the temperature, more the rate of transpiration. Why is it so? Since there is more temperature, there is more evaporation takes place due to which more water vapor comes out and transpiration is more. The third factor affecting the transpiration affecting transpiration is wind. Higher the velocity of wind, higher the transpiration. Because if the velocity of wind is high, the wind will take away the water vapor on the surface of leaf. The fourth factor affecting transpiration is the humidity. Now, if the humidity in the outer surrounding is more, transpiration rate decreases. Why? Because due uh, to humidity, humidity means the water vapor in the air. Now, since there is already water vapor in the air, more water vapor cannot go from the leaves to the outer surrounding. Henceforth, transpiration is less in this case. That transpiration takes place in the plant body. But what are the uses of it? Let us see. The first use of transpiration is that the cooling effect. The water which is transpired by the plants gets evaporated and hence it keeps the, the environment cool when it is hot. The second is that it maintains the concentration of sap. Now, when water is absorbed by the roots, it makes the sap dilute. So, to make it not dilute, the transpiration takes place. We all also know that water is absorbed by the roots. But, what is the importance of water in the plant? Let us see. The first importance is the cooling effect again the water which is transpired gets evaporated by itself so it makes the environment of the plant cool so this is the first one importance the second importance is trans uh, transportation the water and the minerals are transported by the xylem due to the water the minerals also in it are uh, transported by the xylem and uh, xylem in the uh, whole plant and also in the leaves and henceforth the leaves can uh, produce their own food. The second is the production of food in the plant. The water which is in the plant, it combines with the uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to form their own food which is glucose. This glucose is the food produced by the plant and gives the energy to the plant. Now. Let us understand the importance of minerals in the plant. There is a lot of importance of minerals in the plants. There are certain nutrients which are important elements that are in the form of minerals in the plant which help them grow neatly and properly and complete the life cycle properly. Now, there are two types of minerals, micronutrients 
micro minerals and macro minerals. Now, in the macro ones, the these nutrients are needed in a large quantity. For example, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus. Whereas these micro nutrients are used in a small quantity, like magnesium. With this, we complete the chapter transporting plants. I hope you must have understood the chapter easily. Thank you.